I've seen I've seen a lot of uh, videos on YouTube about the uh, two moons. I had a dream that I was standing in the green pasture. I saw a great white moon, and God was enthroned on that moon. That was his throne, his great white throne. I went down to my, my knees in that pasture, and a guy was standing next to me. And I tugged on his pant leg while I pointed up to God in that moon. And I told him, you got to get on your knees. About that time, I looked back at that full moon and God enthroned on it. And I saw deer, men, and birds run out of the moon and away from God. And their bodies were like stardust across the sky. I stood up and I turned around and I'm looking inside this house with these men and women running back and forth frantic in a panic trying to gather up things that they think they need. I saw this, this naked baby in the middle of the floor there. This woman picked up that baby so it didn't get stepped on. And I hollered into that house. I said, you don't need nothing. We got to go. I looked at her. I said, you don't need diapers. We got to go now. Uh, talks about this great white throne, Revelation 12, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the heaven and the earth fled away and there was found no place for them. A lot of people are going to try to run from God in these last days. Can't run from him. There's peace in the midst of the storm. But uh, I had another dream where I saw a great white moon. I didn't see God enthroned on this moon this time. But I saw a red planet down to the bottom right side of it. And I got this evil feeling over me in this dream. So I turned to go run back up in the house. And I'm running so fast I actually grab a hold of the ground and run that much faster. Anyways, I slam that front door when I get into it. And uh, there's a vertical window to my left and the blind to the window is all the way up and the cord to the, the blind is stuck underneath this front door and I want that blind down. Whatever's out there is creeping me out. So I try to open this front door to get that cord out and this jet black wolf comes running up in, in the house. It don't attack me. It's like it's looking for something in the house. It circles around real quick and goes to the room behind me and it circles around there like it's looking for something. I try to shut it off, but it got off into the rest of the house. But... That black wolf goes goes along with the the story of Ramus and Ramulus and Ramus uh, Ramus and Romulus and um, uh, I forget the the she wolf's name but anyways that that great white moon and that red planet down beside it that red planet was Mars those dark spots that you see on the moon they're called Marie it's Latin for seas because the Greeks thought that it was water up there on the seas but what scientists really say it is is something the size of Mars crashed into the moon and upflowed lava and made those newer newer areas where that lava flow was. It was a war in the heavens. It was Satan, Mars, trying to exalt his throne above God's throne. And Satan's throne was cast out of the heavens. Satan was cast to the earth and his throne was cast out. And uh, if you look at these pictures like Baphomet, he's been in the news here lately. But you see Baphomet sitting on the earth. There's the moon that we know. And there's that red planet down there beside it. Satanists and Catholics and Muslims know more about it than the Christians do. That's why Catholics and, and Muslims have uh, telescopes set up and, and watch the heavens. They know that there's more going on in the heavens than what we know and they understand more. It's time for us to understand. But Isaiah forty twenty one says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he, talking about God, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, talking about the moon. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. That was Isaiah 40, 21. Job 22 says, Is not God in the height of heaven? And behold the height of the stars, how high they are. And thou sayest, How doth God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? Thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not. And he walketh in the circuit of heaven. The rotation, the circuit. Psalms 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor knowledge where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom, talking about Jesus, coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Along with that picture of Baphomet, you also got George Washington sitting in the toga, just like Baphomet, as above, so below, and all this idolatrous symbols. America is so lost in their idols, they don't know what they're worshiping nowadays. But you have this other throne here with the Catholics. 1 Kings 10, 18 says, Moreover, the king, talking about King Solomon, made a great throne of ivory, white like the moon, right? And overlaid it with the best gold, 
and gold like the sun, right? The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side of the place of the seat. This 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 throne in uh, 1 Kings 10, 18, and 19, Solomon, the temple that Solomon built, it's shown an eclipse with the round at the back of the throne, the gold and the ivory, like the sun and the moon. The Catholics have one like it, gold and ivory, but it's square. It just ain't right, is it? Something just ain't right. They have another one. It's a red one. This throne right here, the Pope sits on. Scarlet colored throne. When the moon turns to blood and the sun black as sackcloth in the last days, Mars coming back around. Up here there's a circle. It's Mars, the seat of Satan. Mars used to be beautiful. In Ezekiel 28, it's talking all about Mars. It's talking about how he walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, talking about the stars and the tabre of his pipes, talking about Mount Olympus, uh, the largest volcano in our solar system. It's four times the size of Mount Everest. Just all kinds of other stuff. Uh, there's been a lot of a lot of stuff on YouTube about these moons. I have a lot more, a lot more testimony to give, and I got a few minutes here, so I want to tell this dream if I remember it right. It's been a while since I've given this testimony, but I've given it to hundreds and hundreds of men in prison in the last five years. I just got out a few months ago. Time to share it with the world. I had a dream while I was in prison, some dark days there. I was depressed, sleeping 20 hours a day, you know, feeling like God just abandoned me in prison there and everything. And I had a dream that I was floating on my back in this ocean. And there's a, uh, at night, and there's all these dead bodies all around me with their faces being ate out by maggots and everything. I woke up from that dream and I knew it was a dream from the Lord, but I had no idea what it was uh, saying. Later that night, I was studying the names of God and my favorite name for God came up and it was uh, Psalm 68, 5. A father of the fatherless and a defender of widows. But in my dark cell there, I accidentally looked up 88, 5 instead of 68, 5. And I would have never thought that this dream was in the Bible, but I found it in uh, Psalms 88, 5. He led me there along with this scripture here. It says, Adrift among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. All through that Psalms 88, David is pouring out his feelings of how he feels so, so, so left, depressed. Where are you, Lord, and everything. God was telling me that's all feelings. I might feel adrift among the dead like the slain that lie in the grave whom thou rememberest no more. But he is a father of the fatherless and a defender of widows. And he has this in his hands. Bless y'all.